interesting to go from the home side perspective for you guys to ignore all that that hype really concentrate on what you, you could do well I think we had to embrace it do you know what I mean I think we'd be foolish um, not to understand that we've got to deal with an environment that may have been different than the one we'd have had to deal with if we'd have played Forest a couple of weeks ago um, I was delighted with the professional manner we went about the performance I thought first 20 minutes we, we rode out what could have been uh, the Alamo if you like for attacking play I had a couple of decent chances on the counter that maybe we should have done better with and um, generally showed good energy good athleticism um, to break but uh, I think second half Credit to the boys at the back and the goalkeeper because uh, Frankie's been out for a while and he's made two big saves there that are important times of the game. And we defended probably eight or nine corners very, very well. So um, I always knew with our athleticism and our fitness that as, as time went on in the game and the subs that we've got, um, in the strength that we've got in depth at the moment in attacking areas, that we could cause Snotland Forest a problem as the game got stretched and uh, that provided, uh, certainly was the case when Casey Palmer came on and gave us a bit of ignition again and a bit of attacking intent, got the ball wriggled, great little slidey ball to Weiman who probably should have shot but squared it lovely for a uh, six yard little tap in for fun. Yeah, another clean sheet, Lee, you must be really pleased with that. And it took about, I think, 45 to 50 minutes before to get a shot on target. Yeah, well, I think like at the start of the year, like we talked about having that strength in depth, um, and this game is a classic example of having sort of eight players, if you like, for four positions. And uh, obviously Webster was out, and Hunt was out, and Mike was out. But coming in, you've got Frankie Field in, Eros Pisano, and Nathan Baker. You know what I mean? They were getting most sort of uh, other teams in the championship. So credit to the sports science team because. Eros has been out for a bit. Frankie hasn't played probably for six, seven months um, at least. And uh, both players are excellent. So what's happened with the guys? I think you lost four or five in midweek. What have you been doing? Well, two were from the game. You know what I mean, Nicky Myper unfortunately sustained a, a calf strain in training. Um, and, and sometimes you get those. You know what I mean? We had a fantastic um, return in terms of points and, and getting through in the FA Cup over the Christmas period but it's obviously taken its toll. I don't think it's just us. I think most clubs in the division have got some sort of uh, issue in various places. You saw today Forrest had to make changes due to suspensions and and probably our backup on the day was a little bit better than theirs. Does it affect your plans for January at all? Well, I'd like to bring in a striker. I think it's, I think Fam needs uh, like a physical striker. I think Famara needs a bit of a... Um, not a rest, but we need to be able to share it, if you like, whether that be coming off the bench uh, or, or starting and uh, and give him a rest and, and keep it fresh. And I think that, uh, I don't know if we'll be able to do that, I've got to be honest, because it's very, very expensive um, <laughs> in this league now and we're not uh, the biggest payers, but I'm sure if the right player comes available, then uh, we'll be able to uh, add them to the squad. You know this league, uh, Lee Miller, what does it take to... Out of it. Well, <laughs> I've never got out of it. I've been close as a player, and uh, I think definitely the strength in depth is important. Yeah. I think like last year we had a fantastic start first half of the season, and um, we had like eight or nine injuries and, and actually operations, and in and in the end we were flogging the same boys. Mm. So I think I think last year at one point we had seven out of the. Uh, top 11 in Europe for minutes played with the cup run and, uh, and everything that we played and you could see it we just couldn't uh, give me whatever we tried resting them like giving them a day off like running them whatever we just couldn't retain that uh, energy that we need to play with so made a conscious decision this year particularly from the back to overload those areas and uh, create competition but also depth and I think if you look at the top teams, what, what finances give you is, is the ability to make changes and, and not reduce the quality of your team. And inevitably, the big hitters always end up in and around it because when the smaller teams falter in terms of losing their best 11 or 14 or three, three of those players, the big hitters are bringing in somebody that's just as good 
uh, if if not one percent, not quite as good. So I think I haven't really explained that very well, but you understand the picture in terms of um, you as good as your as your depth, but more importantly the quality of your depth. Thank you, Lee. Are you behind your your chairman's comments uh, about about Leeds United? Is that a whole club decision or? Um, well, I'm always behind my owner, that's yeah. for sure, yeah. and uh, I think that's important. But, but for me, it's old, it's old news now. Do you know what I mean? I, every man and his dog's commented on it, hasn't he? And, yeah. uh, and uh, although we did uh, spot somebody peeking through the bushes, and uh, Dean Holden started talking Spanish to him, and we sent uh, Brian Tinian out with a uh, paintball gun and camouflage. So, uh, Are you uh, serious? <laughs> no, <I'm not> <laughs> um, no, so look, it is what it is. I think he's a clever man. I, I respect him immensely as a football man, and uh, and it is what it is. Let's move on. Like I, d I didn't like it when it if it was and when it was done to me, but at the same time, uh, I understand that he's a winner. I mean, you say move on. The only reason I'm asking is because eleven clubs have actually officially complained to the. EFL. Okay, I, do, I haven't got involved in that. Look, my focus is busy enough in the championship. You know what I mean, if I worry about other clubs, uh, I'll end up losing focus. What's uh, and and you can't. And I think that's shown today that the players have really produced a very professional thought performance away from home in a difficult environment. Yeah, actually, you you've announced some new contracts this week, and Callum Odeo was one of them. I'm just ask you how Callum has improved and suppose as a player during your time yeah I think listen first and foremost Callum's a fantastic human being and I think that's important we tried to set the culture at the football club and uh, obviously we knew about his potential at Oxford we've given him the vehicle to, to grow if you like and, and the, the work that we've put into him behind the scenes and it's not just I mean if you see him when he signed he, was pretty, he probably put four or five kilos of muscle mass on I mean, so it's not just technical; it's physical, obviously tactical. But he's a good student, and um, he's a consistent uh, part of the starting team now in the in the Ireland squad, and rightly so. And uh, obviously, we want to keep him as long as we can because it should be our job to build around those type players, and and that will give us the opportunity at some point in the future to compete in in the sort of higher echelons of the division. I know there was some transfer speculation around it this week. Was the contract a response to that, or is this something that's been in the pipeline? No, no, I think that we made a conscious decision to be consistent, and uh, a lot of the players, well, not a lot, four or five, had options that naturally we wanted to take up anyway. So it was just a case of being consistent and releasing that. Um, it wasn't a reaction to speculation at all. Um, I don't want to lose Callum. Do you know what I mean? We lost four or five players in the summer that were good players and, and that's put us in a position where we don't have to now lose our best players and uh, I'm a big champion of his if you like because I believe in him and uh, I think you saw his athleticism and calmness, composure on the ball today and uh, he's still got in things to improve on, end product and goals and assists but uh, certainly that raw potential is there for him to go and play at the very top level. I'll take one more from here. Lee, uh, I think you're unbeaten since November. Is that five wins in a row? If there was a spy in the bushes at your training ground, what's the secret behind this this run? And are you sort of yeah. the dark horses maybe in the in the promotion run now? You're timing it well. I mean, it's been a good run. I think, like, do you know what I mean? I'd be a fool to say it hasn't been a good run. I think it starts with the work we do on the training ground. You know, the clarity that the players have got in and out of possession allows them to go and be creative. And we've won in different ways. Um, in this run and, and we've drawn games as well but I think that's 7 out of 11 wins and we want to keep it going really listen it's going to come to an end at some point and when it does we've got to get back on the bike as quickly as possible and, uh, and go for the next one but I said in my previous press conferences we've got to go for wins now and see where it takes us we, we split our team in half really in the summer and it's taken a lot of coaching, to be honest, to uh, for myself, the staff, and a lot of integration with the new players to get to where we are today. But we are competitive, and we feel on any given day in the championship, we, we can win. And we've got to have enough of those given days uh, moving forward into the last 18, 19 games. We have one question for Monday, Sam. Yeah, sorry. Um, the championship, highly. Uh, 
the uh, championships become so sort of high profile. What's it like being in the dugout when you've got managers like Bielsa and obviously Martin O'Neill? It's brilliant. I love it. It's against. like listen, thirty-seven-year-old English manager. You know, you see, there's not many of us. You know what I mean? Like, I think we've got to start. The big picture is like we've had discussions. We've got to start getting English managers and, and quality English coaches abroad um, because there's a lot of foreign coaches coming in. And for me, it's a fantastic learning curve, you know, coming against the best, um, even the likes of Yap Stam, which taught me a lot when he came into the division, you know, in terms of his patterns and his movements. And, and we've seen a few of them off as well. So for me, I'm very grateful to be at a good football club um, with a rich history. And uh, obviously I played there as well. So. Um, although I'm striving to improve, in fact I'm going out to uh, Leipzig on Monday for a couple of days, which I'm looking forward to, uh, just as a bit of CPD, because that's the sort of thing that you, you you can't do in the in the rat race, if you like. And as a 37 year old um, fledgling or gunslinger, if you like, it's important that I continue my development. And uh, glad, thankfully, they've let me in. Brilliant.